Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Yeah, I'm, well, uh, after yesterday, I'm doing absolutely fine and dandy now. Um, there was a bit of a concern about a week ago. Um, you and I spoke very briefly about the fact that the BC Live League table was falling somewhat short of its uh, £4 billion monthly benchmark. But a week is a long time in construction, so I'm going to stay with my fingers crossed and I'm going to ask you, Neil, what are the scores on the doors? Well, I think the industry must have uh, looked behind the sofa and uh, uh, reached down in, way into its pockets uh, because um, by the end of the month, by the end of uh, yesterday evening, uh, we'd found uh, five, just over £5.1 billion pounds worth of new construction orders uh, uh, Throughout throughout the UK, so yes, it did, it did creep over the four billion pound mark uh, towards the uh, early part of last week. But we were bumping along at that stage. But yes, I think they found a few uh, pennies behind uh, the sofa, behind the sofa. Because I mean, it's important to put this into context because obviously we are at that point of the year where things are traditionally slowing down a little bit. But um, you know, the very fact that we've maintained that four billion pound plus mark yet again, that's that's going to be fairly reassuring as we enter the new year. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You, you know, we're all about confidence as an industry. You know, literally, um, if we see uh, some kind of uh, snowflake outside or something like that, we think there's going to be a winter storm forever. You know, it's uh, but so, we, yes, the, in, the industry is very jittery, no matter how robust it really is, if you look underneath, it, um, it, you know, between the pages. But, um, yeah, it's got the confidence here yeah, uh, and five billion pounds worth of work is uh, good news. Uh, that's awesome stuff. So I guess the first question then is, who came out on top of the heap this, this month? Yeah, well, this month uh, was uh, a company that sometimes uh, reaches the upper echelons. It, it's Weights uh, as a group. Um, and they secured just over half a billion. So it's £567 million pounds worth of new orders. Um, and uh, that was 11 projects. So, you know, that, that was a fantastic uh, month for them. Uh, the largest of one of their jobs or their jobs was a 157 million pound um, project at Canada Water. Its plot 1A will include 35 storey b- building to form apartments, offices and retail space. I think that area of, the, um, uh, of London is seeing a significant amount of uh, redevelopment. And this is actually classed as plot A1 at Canada Wharf. Um, which is around the rather high southeast 16 area. So, yeah, that, the largest of their projects was 157 million pounds. Uh, second on the list is Winvic, and they actually secured the largest project in the whole month, um, which was a 220 million pounds uh, new industrial unit. Win, Winvic are very uh, good in this um, sector, uh, and they specialise in warehouses and, and industrial units. Uh, and this one is called Pedimore Development Zone Unit B, uh, and it's in Sutton Coalfield, and it's £220 million worth of work there. It's a distribution centre, um, including offices and welfare facilities, uh, earthworks, internal access roads, etc. Um, and, and it does seem that we've spoken about this with, with the way we now purchase things uh, predominantly online, uh, or has gone online over the last 18 months, these type of projects uh, are, are definitely to the fore yeah, within the construction industry. And third on the list is a joint venture. Um, and we are back to housing. Uh, this is a joint venture between Galliard Homes, uh, Aspley House Capital and Wavensmere Homes. And this is for 150 million pounds. They've, they've actually picked up two projects um, worth over 250 million pounds. Uh, but the largest of theirs is a £150 million project, and that's in Ipswich. Uh, so the East Anglia region um, on the region, when we get to the regions, has obviously had a, a boost this month. Um, yeah, that's, it will provide, um, it's, it's called Barrelsman Point, uh, will provide 400 home, homes at Shotley Peninsula near Ipswich at a 68-acre site. Um, and it's the former historic HMS uh, Ganges Naval Facility. So it's one of those projects that the government gives out uh, 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 as redistribution for their uh, or closing down of the MOD type of work. It's interesting that one's a, a joint venture. I mean, I, I tend to think of joint ventures more allied to you know the big civil engineering projects, you know, of the HS2s and and that kind of thing. But 
you know, three house builders getting their, their heads together. That's, that's not, not particularly usual, is it? No, I think it well, obviously more likely the purchase of the site um, when you consider how big the site is, etc., may have been a step too far. I don't know. Uh, may have been a step too far for a number of uh, house builders. So as a joint venture, it probably was a sensible route um, to say, right, OK, we'll do this, whether it be phase one, two or whatever, or section A, B or C. Um, so, yeah, combining together does seem sensible um, because obviously you are getting a, a, a a different type of unit as well because they're all not going to be standard units on this they're all going to have their own uh, units so yeah it's going to be a an interesting project up there in Ipswich but it, yeah it's one of the one of the, the sell-off of the MOD uh, land so obviously the money goes back to the government and I'm sure there is quite a lot of contractual requirements on this site re regarding um, social housing and affordable housing for people. Yeah absolutely um, I'll, I'll let you carry on with the uh, with the list, um, but I, I, we've already had a couple of questions in uh, the, those outlying in the regions uh, in Scotland and Wales. We'll come to that in just a second. But you carry on with the, uh, with the top five countdown. They are I think I know where to find out whether there, anything's happening in Scotland and Wales. I think I know where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> and this month, I've actually looked a little bit more in depth about uh, um, one part of the country. <laughs> So yeah, on, fourth on the list um, is a company called McAleer and Rush. They've secured nearly 200 million. It's 197 and a half million pounds worth of work. Uh, and that's over three projects. And the largest one of theirs is a 140 million pound project uh, back in London. And it's at Mount Pleasant. Uh, in, uh, it's Mount Pleasant phase three and four. Uh, these are the final phases of the iconic mixed-used postmark development, transforming the site of the former Royal Mail um, uh, Mount Pleasant sorting office in um, Farringdon. Uh, so it's yeah, it's 140 million pounds worth of work there. So it's interesting because when you said Mount Pleasant, the first thing that came into my head was the post office. I can't yeah. think of anything else that's there. No, exactly right. I think uh, McAleer and Rush are doing it. One, the, the, the client is Taylor Wimpy. So Taylor Wimpy aren't there. Uh, it's more likely McAleer and Russia are, are very specialist, uh, are, are a great company in building um, uh, tower blocks and blocks. Whereas probably if you look at it, uh, Taylor Wimpy are more attuned to housing and, uh, and developments like that. Um, uh, so, yeah, they, they've chosen McAleer and Rush to, to do that project. So it's a £140 million project there. And fifth on the list um, and overall uh, winner of the most uh, projects this month is Kia Group which is no surprise, really. But they've, they've only picked up 17 this month, um, comparatively to their great successes, normally over 20 each month. But they have picked up 17, um, which is uh, a cumulative total of 185 million. And uh, two of their largest jobs, one of them is they picked up a uh, facilities management project for uh, the MOD, uh, or it's actually the MOJ, Ministry of Justice. Um, so it's a hard facilities management services works package B throughout the country. Um, so it's to do with their, obviously, so that's more like courts and uh, prisons and places like that. But the other big job they picked up is a £35 million job down in Bournemouth. Um, and that's for 121 flats and a hostel across four blocks, uh, rising up 10 storeys. Uh, and uh, 88, uh, 86 of those flats will be made available uh, for the council for affordable uh, rates. Uh, so, yeah, the client there is Bournemouth Borough Council. Uh, so, yeah, their accumulative total is something like, as I said to you, what was it, um, £186 million pounds worth of work. And, I still remember when £186 million pounds was a lot of money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, and this month, what are we looking at this month regarding the uh, £100 million uh, projects up, you know, the, the companies? It looks like there's 13 uh, businesses that have secured um, projects uh, or an accumulated project total of uh, uh, £100 million. And, um, yeah, if I just quickly have a look at the actual stats itself, you know, £5.1 uh, 5 billion is more than last month uh, because last month was just £4.8 billion. So it's a 5% increase. Um, and then uh, the number of projects has also gone up uh, by something like 20%. So we're up to 447 uh, projects this month. And the number of companies that have secured work this month uh, is up as well uh, by 8% to uh, just under 300 uh, new companies, 300 companies. But if you look at it compared to, bizarrely, 
uh, November la uh, last year, um, it's quite a lot down. Um, so I don't know, you know, it, taking one single month is very, very dangerous. But yeah, we are down. It was something like 6.3 billion in November last year. So we're 5.1 billion this year. So yeah, it's a 25% decrease. And we, we were just staring down the barrel of a uh, of another lockdown this time last year, weren't we? We were, we were. So what, was that somebody, everybody telling the good news before the bad news was coming? You can never tell. And, and, and a singular month, is, as I say, is extremely dangerous. And, and I think uh, if I have a look at the actual running total, yeah, we're, we're at 84.3 billion pounds worth of uh, work that we found as a rolling 12 month contract. So we're above the norm in, in that, those talk, sort of areas. And, and I, I said, I made this bold prediction, prediction earlier on about 90 billion. I don't think we'll collect, get to that kind of level, but when you're considering it's 84, 85 billion, we're still uh, doing well as an industry. That's still an all time high, isn't it? It is, yeah. You, you know, as you say, if we took the, the, the standard four or five, that's only between 48 and 60 billion pounds per year. So um and, yeah what what i would say is that you know uh, and we're totally honest in all of this um collecting this information is is sometimes not sometimes is very difficult it is extremely difficult and i've got a fantastic team that that, that have got a numerous number of uh, contacts throughout the industry but getting hold of those people is sometimes difficult but also some people hold back their information on purpose because they have may they ha may have um, uh, other pressures, uh, whether it be stock market pressures or whether it be just they just don't want it, you know, uh, and which is a bit in my eyes. I mean, I've been in this now, what is it, 14 years? I just don't understand because you're not helping the industry if you're keeping information back. Uh, um, but it's all out there. I can drive past their site at the end of the day and see the fact they've got a sign board up and say, oh, yeah, they've got that job. But, you know, it's, 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 it's the strange anomaly of this construction industry. We'll come back to that in just a second, but for, let's let's keep um, our friends uh, Ken and Gary happy. <laughs> so, so Wales and Scotland, how are they looking? Well, um, <laughs> standard. more or less how they look most of the time, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Bonnie Scotland is so just after St Andrew's Day yesterday. Um, it's two hundred thirty-seven million, so it's above above average. Um, so that's not bad. Um, Wales. 170 million mm -mm, could do better really but um it's still above a little bit um so it's not too bad but i i think wales has still got this moratorium on roads uh, I, I think we've spoken about it a couple of times um is that holding them back uh, because you see the the likes of uh the midlands storming ahead with their uh hub distribution centers Whereas Wales could be something for the West uh, and, and the North, North West. I don't know. Is it missing something out regarding not having a, a, a cohesive transport policy? Uh, because it's not that easy. It won't be that easy to get around Wales without good road system. So, but yeah, so those, those are those two. Um, but London, what a shock. Uh, 1.1 billion pounds worth of work. So yeah, that's... Uh, I think it'd be very unusual for me not to say that London uh, is not the epicentre of the construction. <clears throat> the interesting thing with that, with the Wales moratorium, though, is roads are in many ways indicative, aren't they? Because, as you said, you know, distribution centres, they need roads. New housing developments need roads. New towns need roads and, and so on down the line. So, you know, the very fact that they're not happening suggests that the, the other stuff isn't happening either. Or mm. if they are, you know, what's the point of building a new housing development that hasn't got a road serving it? It just makes no sense at all. Yeah, it, 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 it's a bit difficult at the present moment in time. And I know there are extraordinary pressures all around the economics of things. But not only that, you've got the uh, COP26 as well, still very firmly in a lot of people's minds. Um, it's how you uh, combine all those issues and come up with a cohesive policy. Um, but in the short term, um, you've still got to get from A to B. Um, so... Yeah, um, very difficult. Um, it, probably you, you can build the roads, but maybe you have the electric cars, etc. on there, or you give it a cheap, uh, they get a cheaper uh, license. I, I, there's so many ways of, uh, and, and a lot more people out there are cleverer than I that can think about how to actually get over these challenges. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now we've 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 touched on the regions, but what about the sectors? Are are we still thinking that house building is ca carrying us all? It is, yeah. You know, I, I spoke about the joint venture there over in um, uh, Ipswich. Yeah, it's uh, one point nine billion pounds worth of work in housing, but you've also got the seven hundred and sixty million pounds in miscellaneous which carries a great deal of those projects, housing projects as well, because as soon as I say housing with retail, office, etc., cetera, um, uh, that goes into that sector or that category. Um, offices is 500 million. Um, education is 480. I think what we've got to look at, and, and, and uh, factories and industrial is also 400, with obviously that large project that Winvic picked up as well. Um, but I think what uh, this does show um, this information is that we're getting a lot of uh, great PR um, coming out, but are those projects actually coming to fruition? Um, and if you look at health this month, um, it's something like 130 million pounds worth of work which we really should be starting to uh, say to the government, and this is where our data and information is really very, very important and is very, very good at holding people to account. And, and that's why this is such an important service that we provide. Um, we really must start to say, okay, you, 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 you've confirmed that you want to do all these projects, uh, government, but where are they? You know, you, you can't keep saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Where are they? You know, because saying 40 projects or 43 new hospitals, not one of them is there yet. And I know and there's that, other other pressures, but you've got to do it. That that has actually been, is that a year now? We've been, we've had the promise of, of 43 hospitals? That That's... That's lagging behind, isn't it? And I, and I guess the next one that will come up, and I know, um, I know, roads have, have not done too badly. But you know, when you've got six hundred and fifty billion promised for infrastructure, you take HS two out of it. Where where exactly is that? When when are we likely to see that? Because they're going to have to pull their finger out fairly soon, aren't they? You're one hundred percent correct, and that's where the builders' conference is is there to do this, um, and it needs more. I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm doing a sort of like an advertising, but this is where we need to say, right, okay, you've said all these things, Mr. Government, but where is it? You know, because if you're, because government projects are also uh, have to be linked with the considerate constructor scheme, and we're linked with the considerate constructor scheme. So when it's, um, when the actual project is um, put to them and, and they register it, um, that information also is cross-referenced with our information to make sure that we've all, we're all talking the same. So, yeah, you can check and double-check and everything else. So you can't say we've missed it because they've got to register it, so it's got to come to us, and therefore we, we should be starting to say, OK. Um, and I know things got to change and there's lots of things, that, but, you know, you, you promised this. We're nearly halfway through your tenureship um, or, or way through your tenureship. Can we kind of say where it's going, when it's actually going to come? You can talk about all these good things, but we really need to know a firm date because we've got to prepare as an industry. Because if you've got all this work, we've got to start training all these people. Well, I mean that that ties back to what you were saying earlier about the fact that you know some people keep their you know they hide hide their contractual light under a bushel. You know how are we supposed to train people and make equipment available and make materials available and all that when when people are, are, are hiding stuff away? It just makes no sense at all. Uh, I, I could, <laughs> you know, I've spoken to off, off air on this on this matter on numerous occasions. Um, I really do not understand that sometimes you can be sitting outside um, a construction site with a name board uh, and you can phone that business up and you can ask them, have you secured this project? And they will not tell you that. I just... Um, absolutely, I don't know, it, it just makes no sense whatsoever um, because you are literally looking into that crystal ball and you're thinking, well, are we going to have, uh, do we need another 30,000 electricians? Do we need another 30,000 plumbers? I don't know. 
let let let's do something. We might as well have thirty thousand white line paint, you know, white lining company. Yeah. You know. I, I put, it's put your finger in the air and hope for the best. Exactly. And 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 we really ought to be a little bit more grown up about this when we go forward from there. We, we touched on just now with uh, Wales and their uh, moratorium and, and the fact that that's indicative. Um, you and I have spoken before about um, the fact that sometimes, the, well, a lot of the time, the UK lacks ambition. And we've just had that from Gary Muirhead. Uh, how will it affect the figures with HS2 being um, scaled back? Obviously, the figures are one thing, but but also, is that not sending a signal? You know, we, we, we're all guns blazing and we're northern powerhouse and we're investing in the north and we're mo uh, actually, we've, we've changed our mind. Is that not yeah. indicative of a wider problem? Yeah, I think, uh, and this, I can only speak uh, personally on all of this, I think that was probably a missed opportunity by the government, really. Um, and I know you, you, you're split between uh, many people with this. So first of all, some people were saying HS2 is a waste of money and everything else uh, because we don't want to get from A to B quicker. It was nothing, nothing about speed. It was nothing. It was about capacity. We have not got the capacity on our existing infrastructure to actually uh, gain good connectivity throughout the UK. We were something running light on the existing network like 97 percent capacity on certain routes from a from north to south which it, it you know if you miss one train uh, or if there is one train taken out of service you're now over 100 percent. and and those pictures of people sitting in the aisles and except going home they were common common scenes throughout the uh throughout the uk so yeah, we ha we have missed an opportunity to do the kind of um, east-west route of HS2, and I know we're going to be upgrading the system, so there is still going to be work processes in there, and I don't know how that's going to come out because if you're upgrading a system, there must be then disruption on the existing system um, or the existing network. I don't know how they're going to do it, so it'd be interesting to see. But yes, it doesn't send exactly the the best signs. Um, but I do also understand uh, the pockets of uh, the, the Chancellor or the Exchequer are getting a little bit empty with what we're going through at the present moment in time. That one with the um, with HS2, though, it struck me like um, when they've done upgrading to uh, the M25, we're going to widen this section to four lanes. But the section after it is three at best, and sometimes <laughs> one of those is blocked up. So all you're, all you're doing, you know, we, we, we can literally, you know, High speed, never mind the, the fact that it was for capacity, you know, high speed from, from London to Manchester or whatever it might, or to Birmingham rather. And then when we're, when we're going off east, it'll be some rickety old <laughs> old steam train. It just, and it just seems to lack foresight. I know you and I have spoken at length in the past about the, the whole idea of Boris Island. And yes, yes, it was ambitious. Yes, it would have been expensive. But when did ambition be a, become a bad thing? You know, we, we wouldn't have the underground system no. if, if we'd lacked ambition in the in years gone by. You know, and that stood the test of time for 100, 100 plus years. Absolutely. You know, and we, we were recognised as as a country to be leaders in the way of the Industrial Revolution. You know, at one stage, who, who would build all these mills for cotton and uh, et cetera throughout the, the whole of the UK? Everybody would think, well, why do we need all of this? Why do you know? Oh, Great big, great big cotton mill, why do we need that? You know, um, we're okay. No, ambition should not. And I think, yes, it was a bit of, uh, a bit of sorry about the pun here, a bit of flight of fancy for um, Boris Island. But there was a lot of good thought processes through that because, you know, uh, the amount of uh, changes that will have to happen at Heathrow, um, okay, we didn't see this pandemic, so obviously air traffic, air traffic is very much... Uh, uh, had a problem at the present moment in time, but probably it wasn't a bad idea really because you could put Boris Island out there, you could make it three, four runways, you could maybe shut or close down Heathrow, I know quite radical as well, put that as housing, there you got your 250,000 units a year very, very quickly or whatever for housing. So I don't know. I don't know. And, and also taking a flight path away from a national capital which, you know, from a safety point of view, you would have thought was a fairly good idea as well. Absolutely. So I know you've got to look at all these things uh, very, very, you know, with, with 
what is going on in the world, whether it be uh, ecologically or um, whether it be economically as well. But there, there were some good thoughts. But stopping HS2 or HS2A, I think it was going to be called, wasn't it? So I really used most of it. Probably they've missed 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 an opportunity there because it sends the wrong message. It does send the wrong message. So no matter if it's more practical to do it this way, it still sends a wrong message. Yeah, totally agree. Now, I know, Neil, I've, I always say this about you, you deal in facts, but we are, this is our last of these get-togethers this year. Um, yes. Next one, obviously, will be early January. So um, yes. I, I guess it is time to, to break out the crystal ball. <laughs> First of all, let's have a, a, a chat about tenders. What are the tenders looking like? Because obviously the, the tenders for now are projects for the new year. How's that element of the BC Live League table looking? Uh, I would say that that is... Um, uh, not as good as I would have hoped it to have been at this point, really. And I don't know. We are seeing that there are... Now, is this a, the fact that companies uh, are not uh, giving that information as much? Could be, you know, everything else. But we are down from last year. Um, and the number of tenders going into the new year is down. Um, so the work is still very good so obviously a lot of these projects that we're talking about just now will be starting in the new year etc or, or, or getting off the ground uh in, you know january february time so i think the first six months of next year are going to be okay but i i i hold my breath uh, and that's the best way of saying it at the present moment in time i would like to see a little bit more uh flow from the bottom uh, to say, yeah, these these projects are out for, for tender at the present moment in time. I think we'll always have this, the, the housing side of things. That won't stop. You know, you, you'll still get the spec developers coming in and, and doing all those things, whether it be the Taylor Wimpies or the Barclay Homes or the Galliard Homes and all of those. They'll still keep pumping that in, in because we still need housing. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But we need some firm facts regarding hospitals, um, education, roads, rail, etc., and, and we still haven't got them. And I know today we've got a, there's been a big framework uh, confirmed and the, the people bidding on that. Um, but those frameworks are just a select list of tenderers, really. That the, the, They'll say that there is this amount of work, uh, but you've still got to bid for it. It's not, it's going to be work and it's going to come forward, but you've still got to bid for it, etc. So even if you bid for it today, you're not going to be starting those projects until... I don't know, September, October next year. Um, so we've got this little gap in the middle that well, I'm a little bit concerned about. I hope I'm not concerned, you know, I hope that blows away in the new year, but I'm a little bit concerned about the, 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 the start of the second quarter of 2022. Yeah, and, and doesn't that coincide nicely with our switch from uh, red to white diesel? So uh, everybody's yeah. fuel costs are going to go through the bloody roof as well. Yeah, and, and we are seeing huge amounts of inflation going through uh, the industry, aren't we, at the moment? You know, I, I think it, I think you spoke about it, it's either 20 or 30% of uh, cement prices in the year. Now, the knock-on effect on that, on pricing, is huge. Um, so are we going to see uh, companies, or even clients, because clients have got the money at the end of the day, uh, starting to rein things back, um, and and, and as, as I say, we are so fragile as an industry regarding confidence. Sometimes, um, is that going to have an effect on it? And you know, we we need more confidence, uh, and uh, so we people we do need these forty odd um, hospitals to come online to be developed to start to put a shovel in the ground. One of the things that, that I think is going to um, influence and, and inform our industry going forward, obviously, is is all things sustainability and zero carbon and, and all that kind of thing. We saw, I think it was earlier this month, the um, the can complete cancellation of this lollipop tower in London, um, mm. which was there were there were a, a number of reasons given for that uh, cancellation, but ultimately it came down to sustainability. Couldn't justify that much reinforced concrete for something that was pretty much a, you know just a sightseeing opportunity. That's going to have an impact as well, isn't it? Definitely is. You know, those uh, we always need. Um signature projects you know and i think next year is 2022 is when the commonwealth games is about so that's why the midlands has had such a uh, uh, an improvement and development process up there 
but we've still, you know, those are the sort of things that will help our British economy. Um, and we haven't got anything uh, in the suitcase at the present moment in time to pull out to say, right, okay, the next one that's going to be there is going to be the World Cup or I don't know, uh, whatever, you know. So we kind of, uh, and then we're starting to lose signature projects like the lollipop building, etc. And I do know that there has been some projects throughout uh, London that have been, been called back uh, by Michael Gove because he's just got his new position and he's reviewing a number of projects as well. Now, reviewing means at least a year or 18 months delay. Uh, and some of those projects, whether they be housing or housing and uh, retail, um, an 18 month delay is, is still not sending the right message to uh, the UK industry. And I, and I can't help thinking that um, when, when somebody says uh, review, I'm thinking VAR. Correct. <laughs> large, when it's sent to VAR, it doesn't generally turn out well for somebody, does it? No, but but if those companies are in that, that they were thinking that those projects were, were going to start quite soon, are they going to say, mm, well, I've only got an option on the land uh, to buy the land. Probably I don't need to, I, 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 I'll take that option away. So if that option goes away, then you lose a client and then they, they, the whole basis has to be looked. Because a lot of these housing projects that we look in London are multi-client based so that you'll have a retailer whether it be one of the big supermarkets you'll have um a, 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 i don't know some kind of uh, doctor surgery within it and then you've got the housing side then you've got the social housing side so it's quite a complex joint venture at the top um and they've still got to produce for themselves and so they've got to meet um the requirements of their own companies or bodies or whatever and if you're all of a sudden you're delaying something for 18 months, are they going to look elsewhere? So I don't know. One of the things that really strikes me about the construction industry, you know, after, after you know, we were granted key worker status and, you know, we, we worked right the way through both the lockdowns, or all the lockdowns, should I say, um, and, you know, we've got build back better and everything else. You know, we, we, we have really carried the weight of the UK economy on our very broad shoulders. And yet it seems like the... It's almost like God has decided, actually, you've had fun for far too long. Um, it, it, <laughs> yeah. Here's a shortage of materials. Here's a shortage of, of um, people. Here's a shortage of um, fuel at one point or a, a big uh, fuel hike pri uh, price hike. It's it's literally like somebody is just putting obstacle after obstacle. And now, you know, sustainability. And listen, I'm as green as the next guy. But, you know, I, I, I tend to look at the, this whole embodied carbon thing because of the uh, my, my links to demolition. But people have still got to have somewhere to live. People are still got to have somewhere to work. Um, and I, I, I do, I am concerned that we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I think the lollipop tower was harder to to justify. Mm. Because ultimately, it was it was more a tourist attraction than an actual yeah. necessity. But you know that is the thin end of the wedge, as far as I'm concerned. And if you've got projects that are being kicked back up the line because of potential sustainability problems, that's going to have a major impact going forward. It is, but all these people that. Uh, you, you're hundred percent correct. All these people that uh, are, are doing data and research into all of these uh, uh, ecological uh, systems, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, still need somewhere to house themselves, to, to whether it be an office or a house themselves. So, it, 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 I think the word is oxymoron, isn't it? It's kind of one, one part you need this, and the other part you don't. But somewhere in the middle, you, you you've got. You've got the right thing, and you know we have to look at things. But you could actually shoot yourself in the foot very, very quickly if you start to say it's like a cancel culture. We, we can't just cancel things. We've got to make improve things. And yes, uh, it, diesel is, is is a nasty element, and and there is no no doubt the likes of Volvo and people like that are pushing the boundaries absolutely with their elect, electrical side of things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we can only go as fast as uh, people can think about and design it as well so uh, we are doing I'm, I'm, very very well i'm really glad you mentioned that because this is something that you and i spoke about uh, a good few years ago you know we, we decided as a nation that we were going to shut down all our fossil fuel power stations and that we were probably going to go largely nuclear 
But at the time, you know, we, we were saying it takes 20 years to build a nuclear power station or to get it through the planning process and then build it. And we're doing exactly the same here, as far as I can see, with, with our, our need for fuel. Yes, diesel is a nasty element, as you rightly say. Yes, we, we, we do need to get rid of it. But there's not actually a properly viable replacement for it. We've got HVO, but it's not universally available. Electric is only, by and large, little machines. So we've not really got that as an option. Hydrogen is still at least a year or more away. So we're, we're literally sort of cutting off our, our nose to spite our face at the moment. If we're not careful, exactly right. Yeah, we used to speak about the, uh, the, the, the actual nuclear side of things. We needed to do X amount. Now we're sitting here and... Uh, uh, looking down uh, at Somerset, thinking to ourselves, "Come on, hurry up, hurry up!" You know, <laughs> try and build. And that, now we're looking at mini nuclear plants, aren't we? I think uh, Rolls Royce uh, have, have just secured some funding through that process. But even in the mini nuclear side of things, you're still talking 15 years, 15, 20 years again. So uh, you know, and I know we're putting up huge numbers of turbines, etc., to actually do things. But what at one stage, what then we had obviously the uh, I think it was the tidal barrier as well. We, we we lost we lost the funding on that. You know, it's got to be a comprehensive and cohesive plan. That's what we need. And and taking bits and pieces out, it kind of, as you quite rightly say, it does seem sometimes, if you're a bit cynical to look at it all, every time we're doing a little bit well, somebody says, OK, I'm going to pull the rug a little bit. So you go backwards rather than forwards. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, Neil, I'm going to let you get back to your day job. Um, assuming you can still remember what the day job actually looked like. Um, yeah, I don't know where that, what that actually looks like in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> How long since you've actually been to the office? We closed the office on the 20th of March, 2020. Wow. Mm. And with, with I, I know this is going off piste a bit, but, but obviously with, with what's happening at the present moment in time, we our staff are exceptional. They're working very, very hard and, and we can work remotely because we have the technology that is remotely. Um, and a lot of our staff also look after um, vulnerable people, whether it be elderly people or young people. Um, uh, one of my staff uh, looks after uh, their father, uh, and another member of our staff looks after their uh, granddaughter that, that, has, that, that has challenges as well. So um, we've decided still not to uh, return. So, uh, uh, it it's, it's, not out, a case of, it's not a case of being a snowflake or anything like that. It's, it's the practicalities of it all. You know, these people that I've got, these researchers that I've got are excellent and absolutely excellent. And we need them to, I need them to be working and to, and to replace those people will be quite difficult. Um, it will be extremely difficult. And so therefore, just to say, right, everybody's got to go back. So you could, sometimes as an employee, you have to balance it. I go in every uh, two days a week uh, just to see if the office hasn't burned down or anything. But that's about it. But when you, you know, ultimately the proof is there in the pudding. You know, the very fact that they found another £5.1 billion pounds worth of work. It's not like they're, they're sat at home in their pyjamas with their feet up. They're, they're, no. they're quite clearly working their little socks off, aren't they? Absolutely. So it works. It works. And I do, but I do under, understand the social aspect of it, like yourself as well, sitting in your little room all day long. Sometimes you do like just to bounce things off of people and just to say, hello, you know, and everything else is, you know, it's, it otherwise it can, can become a lonely world. So I do understand that part of it. Absolutely. Well, Neil, um, I, I will speak to you before, uh, before obviously, because uh, we, we, we do speak fairly regularly, but in terms of this show, um, that's 2021 done and dusted. Yeah, and congratulations tomorrow, I believe. It's your 200th um, show, isn't it, tomorrow? <laughs> it is 200th <laughs> tomorrow, yeah. I, I, I tell you what, when I was laying in bed yesterday, shivering and roasting hot at the same time, I was starting to wonder whether the 200th was actually going to happen. <laughs> but no, I will be here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, uh, ready to do the uh, 200th consecutive show. Who would have thought it, eh? Uh, well, I'm glad the Builders Conference did, did your 199th. There you go. Well, in actual fact, the Builders Conference actually did my first as well. They did, yes, I understand. Yeah. That. <laughs> so, Although I, I, and I will be playing this tomorrow. If you, if you're really bored, I've actually dug out. I, for, for reasons I can't remember, embarrassment was probably one of them. I didn't actually put the uh, the first show up on YouTube, but I managed okay. to find it in the archives. Oh dear. How, pe <laughs> how people ever came back for episode two is a mystery to me. I mean, it, man alive, it was bad. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be sharing that tomorrow. Okay. Well, I look forward to that. Nice one. In the meantime, Neil, have a great day, and I Thank shall you. speak to you very, very soon indeed. Okay, speak to you soon.